Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Rotor World Football Show. I am Patrick Darty, joined Tuesday, June 11th, by Mr. Denny Carter, Mr. Kyle Dvorak. I am on the road in Birmingham, Alabama. That's how they pronounce it, Birmingham. Like they're in England down here, and I'm in Birmingham. Yeah, what are you, Peaky Blinders over here? Down here in Birmingham, Alabama, where we are working on editing the 2024 Rotor World Draft Guide with amazing contributions from Kyle, Denny, Matthew Barry, Zach Kruger, the entire gang, Mark Garcia, Aditya Foldiori in there this year. Uh, some new guys, Nick Bodeford, Nick Schlain. I'm sure I'm forgetting someone. I should not be forgetting some, um, but a lot, a lot of really, really good stuff in the magazine this year. Uh, working on editing it this week, and part of that is going to be deciding who should be on the cover. And we're going to lead off the show, actually trying to figure this out on air, who should be on the cover, not a bit. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. Slow news time, so we're going to skip over Devin Singletary. There are blurbs about Devin Singletary. Oh, man, not even come on. Um, no, but we're not going to do any news talk today. We're, we thought it was a good day to talk about some late-round flyers we like, and maybe this will change, and they won't be late-round by the time a redraft home leagues are going in August. Or at guys we like after 120, a.k.a. the first 10 rounds in 12-team leagues. We're going to get into some of our favorite later flyers. But we were going to get right in to uh, the cover story debate. Uh, but then Denny, as usual, made a stunning admission, a stunning revelation, <laughs> quite literally right before we went on air. Yeah. Where Denny, a few weeks ago, you know, he likes to try to go viral. He likes to try to be <laughs> contrarian. Uh, said he's never grilled. Said he didn't have a grill. You know, he just casually mentions before the show that he's grilling and that he's purchased a grill. I bought and a grill. Explain yourself. Well, why think, do you have a grill? I assume he's trying to avoid it because he goes, I'm, I'm cooking burgers for my family and I got to get on that. So, you know, let's try and be timely with this show. I'm like, what do you yeah. mean you're cooking burgers? Are you doing it in a pan? Are you doing it in the oven? Because I'll have you know the traditional way is on a grill. And you told us two weeks ago, you don't own a grill. And as it turns out, you immediately capitulated to <laughs> the, the grill mob. <laughs> Literally yeah, immediately did. bought a grill. I did. I it, I was embarrassed. Uh, I was getting hate mail. I said, "This is enough. I have to. I have to go to the Home Depot and I have to buy one grill, please." And uh, and then a Home Depot worker punches you in the face, which is legal. And so so he, actually, it was really difficult. I I got there. I went to the grill section, and I said, "I'll have this grill, please." And they said, "We don't have that grill." <laughs> and I said, "What? But it's right here. Can I just have this one?" No, that's for display. I was like, I, okay, what, what grills do you have? We have these other grills. And so my option was a $100 grill or a $580 grill. And I said, I'm not buying the $580 grill. Let's go. So you need a $100 grill? Is this like a Weber one that doesn't even have like a shell, like a lid? It's actually a disposable grill. And Denny will be disposing of it after tonight. A circle of rocks they gave you it, some plants. It should, hey, it should last six weeks, eight tops. <laughs> okay. And that's all I need. Um, it's small. It's embarrassingly small. Uh, um, I The one I wanted, guys, was perfectly fine. I mean, you know, like. It, it was one where a, a dude would come up and pat it and go, ah, nice grill. But this one, the one that I ended up with, they're going to look at it and be like, what, what did you do? What is what this? What did you do? Why did you do does, does this? Does this cook one burger at a time? So, Denny, listen, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm embarrassed. I'm still embarrassed. Denny, I you think the strategy for you was to go on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, one of these, and buy like a grill that cost $800 in 2012 and be like, I've been running this baby for miles. I fire it up every right. weekend when all when all the parents come over because yeah. you obviously wouldn't want to admit that not only did you just have to buy a grill, but you were too cheap to buy the nice one. And so you can only cook two burgers at a time. People start eating dinner at eight o'clock. <laughs> On the too cheap thing, like, listen, Denny's raising two children. That's not cheap. You you really couldn't afford a five hundred eighty dollar grill. Five hundred eighty bucks. No really way, couldn't afford man. A 580. I've seen you. We've had meals that cost like two hundred and twenty dollars. Probably five eight. There's there was zero chance I was going for the five eighty. I would have had to mortgage my backyard. <laughs> Yeah, I don't even think it's just Vegas and L.A. Like the, the cheapest dinner we probably had is two hundred dollars. You really couldn't buy a grill. Well, I was going to say if Denny buys a five hundred eighty dollar grill, that's tonight's dinner is five hundred eighty dollars, and the grill never gets used again. So it's a six hundred dollar yeah. meal. Also, also, it was enormous. It was actually like comically large. Okay? Well, okay. Like, it fits the yard. Your yard I'm gets sorry. a new hectare like, acre every day. I, I'm not an actual grilling dude. Like I, I'm not. I'm not one of these guys who like wakes up at four in the morning to start grilling for some well, reason. Well, clearly you're not. You bought the hundred dollar one, right? 
Right. So, and, and also, I just want everyone to know, I will post zero, zero pictures of this grill, zero pictures of anything I make. You probably already posted. I bet if no. I went to your account right now, there's a picture of the grill. No, 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 no. Denny, you not. should do like a depth perspective thing, like how when people are fishing and they catch a small fish, you hold it out all the way, extend your arms so it looks bigger. <laughs> you should do that with the grill. You know like what? put the grill close to the camera and you stand behind it. Right. You can't see the depth. So you're like, look at my giant grill. I got up at 4 a.m. I've been, been grilling these burgers for hours, right. baby. <laughs> Right, right, and, and and yeah, and why why are people waking up in the middle of the night to start to start their their food preparation? Do you want the it, meat tender or not? Do you want it tender or not? This is this is just ridiculous. This is why just food is just overrated. Like what what do we? I, oh my we, god! Don't even dare yeah. echo the Solak take, please. To, to twelve hours. We will cancel the show if you go Ben Solak. On kidding the me? Thing. Just pour a bowl of cereal for God's sake. Just eat your soil and eat your soil and filled with bugs and ben, move on. Yeah, Ben was right. Ben's right. No. Yeah, I mean, it's, been, a, it's a, a huge. It's literally never been a worse take on the internet. No offense to Ben Solak, but great offense to Ben. Solak. No, but listen, I'm with take. Ben. I heard, I heard the take. I, I nodded along. I said, yeah, it's a huge waste of time and resources to do all this stuff to eat. Denny, you know what's gonna be very embarrassing tonight is when your in-laws, you go to show them your new grill, and they say, "Son, um, that's a microwave." Yeah, right. No, I mean, my, my father-in-law, who's a big, burly, tough dude, and always has dirt under his fingernails, that kind of guy, right? I mean, he's he's a, he's a grinder. He's a worker. Uh, he's already seen it. And he snickered and walked away. And I was just <laughs> humiliated. Denny snickered and walked away when he saw who we chose for our cover athlete last year because he did not agree for the 2023 Road to World Magazine cover star of Tony Pollard. Uh, Tony's time is what we went with on the magazine cover. <laughs> Oops. Sometimes here at Roto World, we get it wrong. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. Look, we don't get it wrong that often, though. I'd like to present you the magazine the year before that. Uh, that's true. Jalen Hurd scoring 20 rushing touchdowns. We got that one. So, you know. Sometimes we get it wrong. I was, yeah, I was ignored as I screamed to everyone who would listen too small. He's too well, small. Hold on, were you actually agree against the cover? Do we have this on, or like, or did you think it was good because it's like a debate, embrace oh, debate? I was against po Pollard. It's just too, he's too small. Are you kidding me? This guy come Pollard on. was the cover guy last year. It didn't work out. Uh, we want it to work out better this year. When I say 2024 Roto World Magazine cover star Denny Carter, who first comes to mind? I mean, not a small guy. Not, oh, you got to cross out all the all small right, guys. Cross me out. I'm not going on it. No. <laughs> No, Kyle cannot be on it this year. Uh, Lad McConkey, absolutely not. Too small. Bryce he's, Young. Is Lad even small? He's so small. I don't care. People say, oh, 6'3", 280, whatever. No, he's, he's not. Like no, he's not. He's he's he, he's a fine. Like, it looks good on paper, but but the guy, he's too small. He's just too, he's too thin. It's, he's the, 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 his legs. Have you seen his legs? Are you kidding me? He looks small. So no, Lad McConkey, by the way, has already been ruled out, Denny. So yeah, no, uh, no. Dude, um, yeah. I mean, look, we should go with a quarterback. And Kyle had a good suggestion before. Quarterback? Why it's not even a controversial position? We've been gassed with the quarterbacks, though. We got Jalen yeah. Hurts before he had the ton of touchdown season. I believe we got Lamar going into the MVP season. I don't think it was coming off. I could be wrong, but no, nah, it was coming got, off. I was coming off. He was still. Uh, he got banged up the next year. Maybe we shouldn't. We did get Kyler Murray, who was good. Uh, and then you look back at really, it's just the receivers or the receivers, the the running back is such a fragile position that it feels unnecessary to take on that risk. Though I do think courting a little bit of a, a I don't want to say controversy, but conversation, you know, you weigh those two things. How likely are we to be right? But like, you just put, put Josh Allen on the cover and win every year, but it's not yeah, fun. Right. And, and Josh Allen would be a nice, safe little pick there. Yeah. We're trying to move units. So we like it to be a big name. Um, We've been thinking receiver. We've been thinking wide. I'll be honest, in my head, I've been thinking Justin Jefferson the entire time. Um, DJ Short, our boss who I'm down here with in Birmingham, um, he's saying Jamar Chase. Is he too small? He's only like 5'11", even though he looks so big no, and no, strong. No, no. I'm not he's talking about short. I'm yeah, not talking about short, guys. That's not what I mean when I say small. The height has nothing to do with it. I, um, oh, so far, I think we're thinking, Jamar, we're thinking Jamar or J.J. Yeah, I, I like I like Jamar as an. Option. There's good angles with both because JJ, he got paid. He's coming back from some adversity with the injury. He's got a new quarterback. Jamar Chase, kind of the same deal. Quarterback injuries, a little bit of an off season last year. Uh, there's adversity there with T. Higgins. Will he be there? How much longer will he be there? 
Um, puns are important though. We didn't, we couldn't come up with any good Justin Jefferson puns. So. Well, I, no. I will say the Bengals seem maybe to be finally over this whole T Higgins charade, like pretending that he's going to be good. So come on. I mean, yeah. I mean, so Ch Chase, I think would be great for, for it, for that realization. If the team is having that realization. Kyle, do you vote JJ or JC? JJ or JC? I like both of these. I would vote Justin Jefferson. I, I like if you make me run the numbers, I probably say Chase like outscores him this year. But I think Justin Jefferson is meaningfully a better player than Chase, which is to say like he's the best receiver in the NFL and Chase is like the third best. But there's a gap between those two things. I, I think Justin Jefferson's the best receiver in the NFL. I think if you wanted to make an argument for someone else, it would also be Tyreek Hill, not Jamar Chase. So like put the best receiver in the NFL on the cover and it'll move some units would be my thing. CD lamb would move units and he makes sense for a, a lot of reasons. Cause he's coming off the Epic season. Um, he could be the wide receiver one overall. That depth chart is like hilariously yep. thin where he could like lead the league in targets and fantasy points, a wide receiver. He's very aesthetically pleasing too. Cause he's so big and strong. He's got the mm -hmm. unique hair, uh, but we can't do another star. We can't do another number of star. Yeah, no, uh, that's a good point. I, yeah, I think we got to uh, cool it on the Cowboys for one year. Uh, Jefferson would be fine. Hey, how about this? J J I'm just throwing it out there. Malik no. Neighbors. No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> we won't have any pictures of him in his like, No one knows who he is. Yeah. But you, you overestimate like the average football fan. Like, who the hell is Malik Neighbors? <laughs> I don't know who this guy is. Yeah. Uh, that's you why know, they're yeah, buying a magazine to find out who Malik Neighbors is. And if they, <laughs> they see him on the front, they have no clue. <laughs> Come Listen, on. you're in the Denver airport. You got five seconds to decide. You're going to pick the one that has yep. the receiver you've heard of, other over yep. Malik Neighbors. Wow. So Malik Neighbors is, is a non entity in football circles then. Right now. We, it would be a picture of him in shorts on the cover, too, because we're not going to have an in game picture of him. Oh, I kind of wanted Brees Hall, but that's a problem with Brees Hall is that uh, they have the new uniforms this year. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. They have the that's... new uniforms. Should um, we embrace debate and go Bajan? Uh, he was going to be my suggestion mm -hmm. if we do a running back because I do think yeah. it's, 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 I don't want to say it's like courting controversy, right? But he was not nearly the best running back or the second or the third best running back in terms of fantasy last year. <laughs> and we're basically treating him as such this year. Like we're treating him as a. It never uh, ever or, fails. Every time we do this in fantasy, it never fails. And uh, <laughs> yeah, surely this time it won't fail either. So yeah, I think he's never even failed though. in the same skill core. It works every time with Kyle Pitts. It's never even it was never even failed on the cover of this magazine one year ago when we projected the running back to make the giant leap. I, I think that's if we had to go a running back, that'd be my vote because it, it, it's a little intriguing. He he has to improve fantasy points wise on what he did last year, but we also think that's a pretty likely outcome. So it's not like it's not like I'm like, let's put Jalen Warren on, dude. We're getting 1,200 yards from Jalen Warren. I'd love to see that. I understand we're not doing that. Every magazine has like the little tiny guy. What yeah. do you call that? Like I, he's called. In the industry, they 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 call, they call it the tiny guy. <laughs> no, you, you <laughs> who's gonna be our tiny guy? <laughs> who's the tiny guy for the I'm small? Right we can do me. The, uh, the tiny guy, I think, it needs to be Bajan or Brees Hall. No, I'll say well, Bajan. Bajan has to be the tiny guy. I like He's, I like that for the tiny Bajan guy. has to be the tiny guy. I was gonna say if we want to go quarterback, since we've kind of been been sort of trying to catch the breakout, catch the hot name at quarterback, Anthony Richardson would be a great one. And aesthetically, he, tiny uh, guy. he looks like a. And beast. Rich could be a. Uh, he'd be a good tiny guy candidate. He'd be yeah, a good not, cover candidate, actually. I, yeah, that's, that's what, what I meant. He'd be a good cover, about. but tiny guy too, because I think there are some good cover candidates. But do you think guy, anybody knows who he, who Anthony Richardson is? No, they don't. Yeah. yeah. Maybe tiny yeah. guy. Yeah, tiny guy. If you're in the I Harlingen, mean, Texas airport, and you have two seconds. Right. To decide my, between my my dad is a good representation of like mm. the very average football fan. I guarantee you he's never heard the name Anthony Richardson. Yeah. yeah. If you're in Phoenix, Sky Harbor Airport, and like Rotowire's tiny guys, Josh Allen, and our tiny guys, Anthony Richardson, guess what's on their behind? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I think I think maybe then receiver plus Bajan is, is probably the move then for Bajan tiny, Bajan be the tiny, tiny guy. guy. Uh, who are our, our tiny ADP guys? Uh, 120, 10th round or later, flyers that we're looking for, Kyle Dvorak. There's someone you felt very powerfully about that you wanted to talk about on the show, even from just a news perspective, because you read like a report that in shorts and t-shirts, these guys were playing catch and it looked cool. Come on. Um, but there's a, there's a, a wide receiver you like beyond the ADP 120 range. So we'll just get started with our later round flyers. Who's the first one you want to talk about, Kyle? 
can't believe I'm already being slandered uh, as the as the guy who buys the camp hype. I was drafting him before. You can check my exposures. Uh, you know, you check the percentage <laughs> points. I have way more than your run of the mill eight percent or whatever it is of Jalen Polk and of Drake May, who was spinning it in practice. And I think non zero chance he's the starter like one to two weeks into the season because he seems like he's a really he's good. He's gonna quarterback. start week one. The Patriots oh, are doing please. the old fashioned bamboozlement, Ooh. but he's got to earn it. He's got to earn it, and Jacoby Brissett's like, my hamstring has been torn since February. <laughs> uh, can you just please name J- Drake the starter, please? Right. Drop hey, off, please. Don't, don't get me riled up like that. If, if Drake May is starting week one, uh, you know, I will have some very fun financial decisions to make. So I have drafted a lot of this fella, only thinking, like, he starts week six onward, and he's, like, a good runner. He's, he's a good, like, high volatility passer. He likes throwing deep. A lot of fun fantasy points to have at pick 180 or whatever it is. Jalen Polk, you don't have to worry about that. And I think partially because the floor at quarterback should be so high. Jacoby Brissett is fine. Like, I think he's one of the best 30 to 32 NF or quarterbacks in the world. You know, he's not great, but he's a high enough floor quarterback that a high floor prospect like Jalen Polk, who has a clear runway to a full time role, will probably succeed with him at his relatively cheap cost. And if Drake May comes in, it's probably because he's also a top. 25 to 30 quarterback in terms of how, how talented he is right now. And that would be even better for Jalen Polk unlocking later season ceiling. The NFL was clearly invested in him. There was a ton of hype around him going high day two as a prospect. I was like, yeah, he's fine. I wouldn't take him high day two. It seems like NFL evaluators quickly came to that consensus. And that's a spot where I want to give them a little credence because he doesn't check a lot of the analytical boxes. He was also playing with a top 10 pick and another day three pick and Jalen McMillan and Roma Dunze, that's the type of thing that I think it's very logical for the, quote, analytics to miss on. It's just hard to discern that from the spreadsheets. But think about it logically, and it makes sense why it would depress his numbers. So the NFL thought he was a good pick. He's playing on a team that I kind of want to be buying into, and it's a clear path to snaps. Like, it's kind of a, a layup pick for me as late as he goes. Well, you kind of want to be buying into the Patriots? Because I feel, like one of the arguments, be- I feel like one of the arguments for taking Jalen Polk is that he's essentially a first-round pick the number 37 overall pick, Denny, and that this this skill core is laughably thin, just laughably, right. laughably thin. You have Kendrick Bourne coming off a torn-up knee. You have Pop Douglas, who is just literally no bit, is too small at 5'8". Picks up injuries, can't be a number one receiver. You have K.J. Osborne, who arrived during free agency. You know, I almost laugh. You have Juju Smith-Schuster. I mean, oh, yeah. Come what on, is this guy doing? He's still acting like you're in the NFL. Just give me a break. Um, yeah. Tyquan Thornton, uh, absolutely atrocious receiver coordinator. Does that make you feel in on Jalen Polk? Or are, are you like me? Like, uh, like I, I haven't even developed an opinion on Jalen Polk yet. Just because uh, mostly uh, like, why am I thinking about the New England Patriots right now? Since I'm not a best ball I, I kind of think, yeah, I think the Patriots, I, I get the process with Polk. And I, and, and, and I like a lot of what Kyle said. Um I mean, really, like it's not it's not a huge miss if 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 you miss on them. So whatever. But uh, I do think the Patriots are probably going to be pretty conservative on offense. And then you have Drake May will probably just flee the pocket every time he doesn't see someone open within one millisecond. So I just I don't know, like the the target volume is just going to be pretty bleak for these guys. Uh, So that that makes me that that makes me kind of uninterested in all the New England pass catchers. But. If I'm if I'm going to get in, into anybody, it's probably Polk. That makes sense. Um, Polk is just a guy where I'm I'm not deep enough into the best ball sickness yet um, to really have an opinion on Jalen Polk. And get back to me in August. That, and I will. Uh, that you were going to hate the concept of this show then. <laughs> yeah, it's true. No, uh, I have opinions on all these other guys. Sure. Um, I feel like it's a little easier to debate running back early in the summer too, mm-hmm. because there's not as much. There's not as much like depth chart. What's the word? Chicaner, ch- chicanery, what, like, like shenanigans in the Tom backfield. Where, yeah, Tom Flory. Whereas receivers, <laughs> core, sometimes they show up and it's like they're like a top 40 pick. Like, oh, that guy's like number nine on the depth chart. You're like, wow, okay. And yeah, right. Uh, it's a little easier to forecast the backfield this time of summer, uh, which we'll do after we take a short break. We'll be right back after this. Pinehurst number two hosts the best golfers on planet Earth for this year's U.S. Open. Find out if Scotty Scheffler or Rory McIlroy can break through this year after top three finishes in 2023. It's the 124th U.S. Open Thursday 
through Sunday on NBC, USA, and of course, streaming on Peacock. Listen, if Scotty can avoid getting arrested. Um, he's winning. Or, yeah, he's going to win. Um, he's winning. He's gonna, you, he, yeah, I, he was I'm rattled. Until the there. cop dropped these charges, he was never winning. He was only getting third every tournament. Right. He dropped the charges. He immediately wins the quote unquote memorial, oh, or whatever that is. I mean, it, I've, that's analytics uh, for in it golf wise. Uh, I've, I've t- spent a lot of time seeing uh, who has good short games on on uh, on fairways because that's all you have really at Pinehurst, and um, you'd be shocked to know no one is as good as Sh- Scotty Scheffler. So. I almost started snoring when I heard short game on fairway. <laughs> it's rude. Honestly. I will be watching. Pinehurst is an all-time legendary course. Right? Yeah, it really should be fun. A lot of these guys will be eaten alive. Like, Have they gonna... been there since the what is colloquially known as the Payne Stewart year? Or uh, yeah, 20, 2014. Martin Keimer won easily. Almost started sure? snoring. Yeah, Martin Keimer. I haven't heard that name in a long time. Yeah, he plays on Liv. Um, he still hits golf balls. Liv. Is, is Liv still going? Oh, it's it's going. It's uh, it's on. If you get on your roof and you turn on YouTube at three a.m. on the East Coast, you can you can <laughs> sometimes watch it. Liv is really exuding. Doesn't even want to be around anymore. <laughs> um, anytime I see anything from it, John Rom just basically looking like he's ready to retire and become a monk. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's a pretty bleak scene. He got hurt last week too. So he we'll did. see. He did. He got hurt. Well, so we'll see if he can actually play in a real golf tournament this week on NBC. Danny, who's a real player that exists that you're drafting after 120 in fantasy drafts? Uh, Noah Fant, folks, the time is, the time is right for Can Noah Can I, I'm going to interrupt you really quick, Danny, because when you said Fant, I'm like, does he mean Noah Fant? <laughs> I was like, is there a rookie Fant? I'm forgetting. Yeah, about. I was going to say, it's a Jalen Polk situation. You're like, yeah. Polk, Polk, who is that? Oh, rookie, highly drafted. You know, they all blend together. And Are then you, no, you're like, oh no, it's you Noah guys. Fant. You don't know. You don't know what's coming for Noah Fan. Noah Fan is the late round tight end. I don't want to hear anything about Conk Daddy. I don't want to hear. You know, it's it's Fan. I'll tell you why. Okay. First of all, I'm I'm kind of bullish on this Seattle offense. Uh, it, it generally, really? can't find my notes. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, it, it, tight end has been like a, a complete disaster for fantasy purposes in Seattle over the past two or three years because it's been split up between Colby Parkinson, Will Disley, and Noah Fant. Well, you may have heard, or may, maybe you didn't hear. Maybe this is news to you, and that and that's fine. That means that you are probably a well-adjusted person doing things that you need to do in the offseason. Parkinson and Disley, Disley are gone, okay? Disley, the most important player in the franchise history, he's gone. <laughs> and and so Fant, Fant's going to be uh, the tight end one, like clear-cut tight end one in uh, this new offense, um, uh, Noah Fant led Seattle tight ends last year in pass routes, but only averaged 18 routes per game. That's pretty low. Uh, when you combine the target share for those three tight ends in 2023, folks, you get 19%, which is not all that bad. Uh, I'm not, you know what? I have a bunch of notes. I'm actually not even going to bore you guys. I'll just say that Fant is really good in the nerdy uh, metrics okay he is because he's uh, not good in any of the real metrics no like, no anytime you, need, you can mean, draft you have, someone. Get, you have to get down and dirty with 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 no fan because you because you the volume's not there like like they 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 don't use him the way that you want him to be used um i will say and yet, I, I wrote this what he means is they don't use him yet the well, way it's because the use. broncos did so anytime you can draft someone who has failed to command targets for five seasons um you have to do it I'm just That's saying just the it, average tight end. None of them have ever. It is true. Him. Actually, that is very <laughs> true. Yeah. I mean, I, right. You're probably going to end up just putting them back on the waiver wire, but uh, maybe not. Uh, Seahawks had the second highest drop back EP on, on early downs last year. They were horrible on, on later downs. I wrote about that in a piece I published on the site today. Um, so I do think that this passing game is being undervalued, underrated, uh, and Fant could easily fall into like a, like a decent role behind Metcalf and uh, and Locke and I, I guess JSN. Well, the thing with the Seahawks is we we are getting kind of mixed signals. Where every time they put a microphone in front of the new head coach Mike McDonald, it's like we're going to run the ball. Like, uh, yeah, the run. We love yeah. Zach Charbonnet. We love Kenneth right. Walker. We love DJ Dallas, who's not even on the team anymore. I don't think <laughs> we, we love him. We love Travis Homer, who's not on the team anymore. So. He, he keeps talking up the run, but 
the new offensive coordinator, Ryan Grubbs from the University of Washington, did extraordinary things with the passing game in the Pac-12, including Jalen Pope, who's now on the New England Patriots. And so it is – there's a little guesswork involved with the Seahawks offense where we don't quite know what the real Seahawks offense is going to be. I yeah. sort of do think they will be more run heavy than expected. With Well, you, yeah, you have a head coach who wants to run and an OC who's never called a run. So we'll see how and that – And you have a quarterback <laughs> who takes a sack every third down. Ah, uh, you're, you're being too hard on Gene. No, Pat, here's the thing is use two passes to get you to third and one, and then you get to run because you do not – I agree. Gino's not – his third down isn't his best down. Of all the downs, <laughs> maybe not the best. <laughs> but you know who can help with those short third downs? Noah Fant, brother. It's true. Denny, would you rather have Noah Fant or just ignore ADP, all that? Would you rather have Noah Fant or JSN of the 2024 football season? Oh, well, that's h- kind of hard because you're talking about – Receiver versus tight end. Uh, I'm just saying. I guess. I guess. I guess. Uh, fan actually. I mean, if you're if you're incorporating ADP. Where's your god now, Kyle? Although you claim that you think Jason's bad now. Yeah, he's he wasn't great. He was bad his rookie year, but like clearly, it, it, Pat said ignoring ADP. Like, who projects for more fantasy points? JSN by a ton, obviously. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't so. like that question. Leading you can never, yeah, I mean, you, that's a you tough ignore, one. Pat. You can't ignore ADP either. It's kind of a fraudulent concept. <laughs> it's like it's really you can't ignore it. So yeah, yeah. Um, what I can't ignore, guys, is that Kyron Williams is utterly screwed as the Rams <laughs> starting running back. And uh, Blake Quorum is currently outside the top 120, uh, but it's barely. He's the 122nd overall player being taken. He's the RB 37. I think it's going to continue to rise probably. And I disagree with that. We're, I, I just, I, people are probably already tired of hearing me talk about it in June. Cause I have made the point so many times. So I am sorry for beating a dead horse, but I just think Sean McVay is out on Kyron Williams's durability. They make Blake Corm the third running back off the board. There's no chance in hell you draft someone who scored 27 touchdowns for the national champion Michigan Wolverines, and you don't at least give them an opportunity at the goal line, especially if you think the running back in Kyron Williams is not durable. Like those are the most rugged carries on the entire field. I just think Kyron's in big trouble. I think the Blake Corum ADP, it, RB37 is a kind of aspirational for Blake Corum, I will say. Uh, but I like him if he stays in like the 10 to 12 round range. And depending on like what summer narratives are with Kyron Williams, like he's healing really well or – He's seen a foot specialist who said his foot will never get hurt again. Oh, uh, maybe foot specialist is like the most ominous and very plausible news to come out in like a week before training camp, right? So first, I'll just ask you guys that. Do you think RB37 for Blake Corum, is, is that a fish ADP or is that mm-hmm. a sharp ADP? Is he already like, is there no value left with Blake Corum? Or do you think there's still Dan Denny value left to be gained with Blake Corum? I mean, could be a lot. Could be a lot of uh value to be gained at, at, at rb 37 if if kyron misses time if blake quorum like splits the backfield or takes over yeah then you're talking about a, a ton of value i will say that like in your in your home league in your office league or whatever quorum's going to be going later than that probably yeah unless unless That's we get true. news unless we get news in the summer that kyron williams is down worse than we thought then uh, that then then that changes, but I, I I think I do think that the the way that early drafters, best ball drafters, are evaluating this Rams backfield is going to be different um, than the the normal person, well adjusted person. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's fine. I don't know. Maybe maybe Kyle will disagree. Hey Kyle, what are your thoughts on the Blake Corum Kyron Williams situation? Because you you tend to fall on like the sharper end of the spectrum in terms of like where you are. Like Denny, I are dumb. Uh, especially me. Uh, <laughs> Denny you, splits you, the difference between yeah, you old. Got the, you got the stupid, stupid millennial take. Now yeah. let's go to the Zoomer. See what yeah, you know, what's the, the 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 Zoomer who is out there do, grinding mess ball drafts all the time? Where do you fall on the Blake Quorum end of the debate? Yeah, Denny, I'll have you know, Noah Fant is my highest drafted tight end. I like that one a lot. Your draft on DraftKings, he's the twenty. He's the pick two hundred forty-seven, and you're like, <laughs> there's a reason for that. that. There's a reason for that. I love I mean, it. Oh, Pat, yeah, you're that, you're gonna have to apologize formally to us. <laughs> I, I like that one. Yeah, corn's corn's fine. I think among the like stereotypical insurance handcuff type of backs, 
he is among the best. They have, I mean, McVeigh has talked up endlessly how they see him essentially as a Kyron clone. He's like, he does all the things Kyron does well. He comes in as like, not the most efficient, but clearly an NFL ready guy. It's kind of how mm -hmm. Kyron was. He was, he was a po very poor athlete, but he could do a lot of things at a medium high level. He's not the best breakaway runner. He's not the best pass catcher, but he can do some of that stuff. And I think that's how they view Corm. And maybe they view him as that plus goal line or plus every third drive kind of the way we saw with, you know, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt a few years ago. So he's being priced, I'd say perfectly appropriately. It's more so how, how is your team built? And can you handle a guy who I think probably projects for a lot of zeros? I think if all goes well, Kyron's getting enough snaps to basically render Corm as like, you can't start him at all. But that's a that's an archetype that a you lot really of things can so? just handle. I really think from the bat, it's going to be a committee, like from the jump. Uh, I, I think they're out on Kyron, just to be totally honest. He he pulls the plug on running backs the second they're not durable. He did it to Todd Gurley. He did it to Daryl Henderson. I, I think McVay really, I mean, really. Daryl Henderson's bad at football. I'm not going to read too much into him pulling the plug on Daryl Henderson. Kyron Williams good at football? I guess he is. He was really good in all the metrics last year. He wasn't elite, which I th was why there's some concern. Before the injury, I was like, I am not going to draft this guy early in the second round. Because he was good last year, but he wasn't special. Kind of reminds me of how Josh Jacobs was two years ago. Really good, sees all the work, but he's not great. He's not a player who I expect next year to also be a top, top three, top four running back. He's more of a top 10-ish guy. And those guys bounce around a lot. The standard deviation of those guys is pretty high. Now with, with Kyron falling pretty far in drafts, like I'm a little more comfortable with it. Corm, I think is fine though. I still think like the most likely outcome for any like third round pick as a rookie doesn't look great. Like these guys aren't instant producers a lot of the time. So just like playing the range of outcomes, he doesn't have a great projection, but it's very clear that well, if... Kyle, do you have to look at it differently now with the way running back real life draft position is falling where... He is a third round rookie, but he was also the third running back selected. It was, it's because it was a particularly weak running back class. Like mm -hmm. even now in like the area era where running backs don't matter, usually you're gonna get three off the board in the top 50 picks. Yep. I mean we got get we got Gibbs Bijan last year. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. now it's two drafts ago. I think I do think you should probably adjust a little bit for that. But even we saw like where Tank Bigsby goes last year is no guarantee that he's a functional NFL player and Corn was really bad last year. So I still think he's perfectly fine. I think he's one of the best pure handcuff type running backs off the board because I think he probably does. Like the, the medium outcome, median outcome is that whether or not Kyron gets hurt, there's a clear one to one replacement. And Kyron's role is so valuable that I to be love, clear, I love Kyron, that. Kyron's already hurt, to be clear. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's if Kyron misses time because he literally already is hurt. So I think he's fine. I do think like we haven't jumped the shark on making him like the best insurance back. But there are a lot of good insurance backs, and he is the most expensive one. Like, the guys who all go directly ahead of him by running back drafted all have some standalone role that I'm very confident. Corm could, but I'm not I'm not confident in that role week one. But if your team is built for, I have a bunch of, you know, mediocre starters. I went zero RB, but I got Najee, I got Javante. And those guys are going to, like, average enough points to stay in your lineup, and you want to shoot for the moon with the next pick. Quorum's like an awesome pick there. I, I take him plenty. So I think he's perfectly fine. He's just not like my most drafted running back because we're pricing in a lot of the excitement. I actually do think he'll have immediate standalone value. Quorum. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that, that means that Kyron is not going to be a thing. That's what you're saying. I That's just real. That is how I feel, to be honest. Um, where I, Fair I, enough. I, he was already suspicious of Kyron's durability headed into last <laughs> year. And he just basically had no choice but to use him because Cam Akers was not good and then got hurt again yeah i was thinking no. like the goal line stuff kyron was really good at the goal line and they did a really good job spreading defenses out at the goal line it was crazy they weren't facing stacked boxes like inside the five at nearly the rate that any other team was so i remember looking at the next gen stuff I'm like kyron has all these goal line carries and yet he's almost never faced a stacked box they're really hard to game plan against and prepared really well for their opponents at the goal line which made kyron's job easy i don't think he's the most the highest success rate back but the goal line, he really did crush it. And I, I think it takes some level of failure at the goal line for him to give that up to Corum. And I think Corum would probably do well in that role too. It's just like, it's a guy who keeps getting hurt. Where, where are the hardest touches on the field? It's at the goal line. And mm -hmm. it, even though Sean, I just can't get past this idea. Like, how is Sean McVay not going to watch Blake Corum's college tape, which is just him scoring a touchdown every other year, <laughs> yeah. and not think he should play at the goal line right off the bat? I just have a hard time believing. I mean...
it's, it's a fair question. And 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 by the way, uh Corum's metrics were really good before his before major injury. injury. So, so yeah, I mean Corum's never been hurt except for the AC, the ACL thing. Right. right. He's never been hurt besides that. So. And, yeah, and 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 like Kyle has mentioned, like it, it was off the charts bad for him, uh metrics wise last year, but I'm off thinking that's because of the injury. Was it ACL? I can't remember. It was knee from 2022. I don't. I don't remember. It was bad. Whatever it was. No way. To, no way to find out. No way to find out. What would also be bad is not taking a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Don't miss the ultimate tryouts for a chance to represent the United States of America at the Olympic and Paralympic Games from June 15th to 30th. Noah Lyles, Simone Biles, Katie Ledecky, and more of America's best athletes compete for a spot on Team USA in Paris. Watch our country's brightest stars continue their quest for gold on NBC and Peacock. I will be watching. We I'll love watching. Katie Ledecky from uh, from Montgomery County, Maryland, folks. We do. We love Lawrence Jackson from Rotor World Football, who will be covering some of the track and field stuff for us, too. So really, really awesome stuff. Uh, not really awesome stuff on Kyle's second player. I don't really know why we're allowing him to talk about yeah. this. Uh, someone who Kyle doesn't have an ADP. I think he does on the official underdog fantasy app. Uh, the tool we use for the underdog ADP, though, he does not have an ADP. Um, who is the player that I'm talking about? Sans ADP, Kyle. Dimitri. So I, I, when we were in our group chat, I threw out like a few different options for this player. And uh, I didn't know which one you were going to go with. And then you said it was disgusting. And I was like, well, okay, that clears it up. It, it's Clyde Edwards Lair is the best worst pick you can make right now. I think as Braylon Allen probably was that guy until his ADP is like immediately screaming up on all the good, what uh, OTA buzz now mini camp buzz. Uh, he'll be going up Clyde Edwards Lair. No one wants to draft. Who, who do you think is going to be their RB2? Clyde Edwards Lair has been really good, as, really good as a stretch, but he's been a top 20 back in yards per route run in terms of being a pass catcher over the past two seasons. Like yeah, he the, can the 14 build... routes he's allowed to run, he just rips. Them. <laughs> no, see, in in on the uh, PFF page, I didn't have to change the minimum number of targets to okay. get him there, which I felt very good about because I That's thought I would too. Sign. That's yep. a good sign. <laughs> Yeah, he's above 1.2 yards per out running back-to-back -back seasons, which is a lot better than where he was as a rookie. It's also in as a second-year player, and it's what he was known for in college. It's That's kind of, I think, that's a big part of what got him drafted in the first round. Whether that was right or not, uh, hard to say. I need a few more years to figure out if that was going to be. <laughs> but, like, who, like, seriously, who do you think is going to be the number two on the on maybe the best offense in football? I get they weren't there last year, but, Pat, as you pointed out, like, yeah. they're, they're telling us what we need to know about how they want to play football this year. Yeah, I mean, and you're absolutely right. I when I just did our running back profiles, um, there's there is no competition for this number two. It's job. Keontae Ingram. I think they cut Lamichael P. Ryan, if I remember correctly. They did cut Lamichael P. Ryan. Denaric Prince is back for round two. Oh, the problem nice. is, I wrote this um, in my CH write up. Right up. Keontae Ingram actually could just be better. That is a problem. Keontae Ingram was not, not good for the Arizona <laughs> Cardinals. Could just be better than CH, and CH might not get this number two job. But being the incumbent. Being in house, being you know fully familiar with the Chiefs' offense is going to be a huge leg up, and that number two battle. Andy Reid has preferred a two back backfield for a long time now in Kansas City. They don't really want Isaiah Pacheco catching the passes. They might not even want him playing those kind of snaps. Like a lot of times, you catch a pass, you instantly take a big hit. Like a guy who's already taking so many hits, they might want to not expose him to even more contact like that. Where I could see them maybe trying to use Ceh as a, a more traditional, like pure third down back. Because Jarek McKinnon seems like he's not coming back for real this time. Yeah, They're finally moving on from Jarek McKinnon. And yeah, CEH, as disgusting as it seems, uh, does have like a long, long runway to earning number two duties for the Chiefs, Denny. I would, uh, I would like to introduce you. To... Don't tell me about the damn rugby player. <laughs> yeah, stop. That's right. Stop, stop. No, no, no. I, I, Was I right? I... Was that where this is going? I'd like to introduce you to a rugby player who is going to be the RB2 for the Kansas City Chiefs this year. It's 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 Lewis Reese Zamet. Okay. Uh, signed a three-year deal with the team. Three years, folks. I'm pretty okay. sure it's like the standard UDFA type of yeah, deal, is my assumption. I don't think that was standard. I I don't remember that being described as standard. No, it is. Uh, and then anytime something like this happens, like all the guys who love to tweet out contract, you got a three-year deal. But you don't you don't still see this. I'm just, it's just something to note. Okay. Uh uh Andy Reid said Reese Samet will quote start off as a running back 
they'll use him in in, in several when he fails ways. there they'll move him to i'm just i'm just saying that ceh no juice none zero okay tell you what ceh though his big advantage ceh's big advantage is that he is a football player that helps a lot in playing football or i so mean I've heard. it could help I, I I agree that could help. It doesn't guarantee anything. This is CH, this is the most mid running back maybe of our generation. Okay, you know what he is though. The, they love bad running backs. They love they them. Are you saying? Kyle? Denny, they name they me a Denny, what? name me another player who has never played football at a professional level and at a skill position. There are actually a few uh, linemen who are like rugby players and stuff. I'm just, I'm not saying week one, Reese Zamet's going to get 15 touches. I'm just saying as 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 things wear on, he could be he. Well, uh, here's what he'll do. He'll make it th- so that CEH is unusable in fantasy. That, that's what I would say. Do you over under 1.5 career touches for Louis Rees Samet? What are you guys this, thinking? Wait, what? Uh, it's got to be under. I feel like the, the median outcome has to be hammering under. the under on one and a half <laughs> career touches. Has to be, right? Or LRZ. Yeah, wow. Hammering yeah. the under. All I think, like, well, the only. Well, do, do like kick returns count? I don't think they do. Touches me or catches. No, they don't. They do not. Okay. Offensive so definitely touches. has to be under then. The only thing he has going for him in terms of this bet would be he is an international pathway player, and I believe you get like an extra roster spot for those guys. So he, like, if he's a good kick returner, he maybe gets to show up to games. But like the under one and a half touches has to be the correct move for a has never played football <laughs> football player. He's, he's uh, Andy Reid conceded uh, going from pro rugby to the NFL is quote not an easy transit transition, <laughs> but he seems to be wired for the NFL game. He's w- been working nonstop with Patrick Mahomes in Texas this off season. I'm just saying keep him on your radar. CEH, I'm not doing the CEH thing. I'm sorry. I, mean, I will find any reason not to do this. I don't blame this. you. It's not fun. I'm actually, the CEH thing, I hate it, but you kind of got to do it this year. I, uh, you don't got to do it. You don't got to do anything. Do the McKinnon role was so good, too. That was the scanniest, yeah, most efficient McKinnon one. Good. Denny's saying anytime you can draft Sandro Plotzgummer 2.0, the real heads will remember Sandro. What a cut. Um, you got to do it. <laughs> That's a good so, cut. <laughs> you got to do it. Um, yeah, At, yeah. Producer Adam, you got to bookmark this, please. You do. I, we should actually bet. Do you want to bet on career over under one and a half touches? And yeah. I'm in total do- shambles in week 14 when he gets two touches and then he retires after the You're going to be in shambles in week two, brother. Denny, I guess it's a good time to go to you. Um, Man. Uh, apparently, apparently, your second guy was Louis Reese Anderson. But, uh, <laughs> no, no, who, is, Reece. who is your other second guy that you were taking? After? Yeah, my other second guy is uh, I'm just going to keep talking about Malachi Corley, uh, the receiver for the Jets, third round pick, a favorite reportedly of Aaron Rodgers, who, by the way, didn't show up to minicamp for some reason. I was going to say, it's, gonna, it's a shame he's a favorite of Aaron Rodgers, not practicing right now. <laughs> Really? No one Aaron Rodgers, boy, Aaron Rodgers, you know, everyone's talking about how Malik Neighbors doesn't like being a giant. Oh. Aaron Rodgers seems like he's loving life as a jet. Whoa, man, who doesn't want to be a jet more than more than Aaron Rodgers? Um, man, the guy just, I mean, he'd rather play for anybody. All right. So uh Corley, look, here's the bad news is that we got a report uh, a couple weeks ago, and the haters are just rejoicing in the streets. Xavier Gibson, who's a player for the Jets is the favorite to start in the slot along with Garrett Wilson and Mike Williams. Honestly, down, whatever. Infinity, whatever. Infinity. whatever. Just come on. Like, we're going to look at that and be like, oh, yeah, really? That's Is that really – is that still happening or no? <laughs> That's not happening, so we can dismiss that. Um, uh, th- uh, 31% uh, target share last season for Corley at the University of Western Kentucky. Um, 28% in 2022 – uh, so he just pops in a lot of categories, 14th in yards per route run last season among all college receivers, fifth in yak per reception. I, I just think he fits what they're trying to do here, which is for Rogers to drop back three steps and to throw it to the open guy. Corley gets open. Uh, and, you know, I think it could be, could be a scammy thing. Could be fun. I, I kind of agree with Denny where the, the Gibson things, I, I hate to adopt this mindset, but, the Gibson thing is like almost good news. Like, all right, put the the Corley ADP yeah. down more, right? A discount right. Cause Xavier Gibson, he's just like a classic guy. He's like bouncing around between. Right, and, and and Gibson is mostly a returner or whatever. 
and uh and the and the Jets they gotta do this thing with the rookie, like the oh, rookie, you gotta earn it. You gotta earn it. We're we're gonna put uh checking notes of uh, uh, Gibson. Is that is that is that right with a P? Is it is it not Gibson? Uh yeah, we're gonna put Gibson in the slot this year, all year, no matter what. So yeah, not happening. Yeah, right. So right. anyway, uh a good look, pick. I like this one. I, I, I think I think Corley makes sense if you know, if you're going a lot, you know, heavy running back early, if you're finding yourself like like scraping the bottom for like possible, um, you know, targets at the at the end of at the end of the draft uh, to throw on your bench and hopefully they emerge. I think Corley makes a lot of sense for that sort of draft uh, that that's that sort of roster structure. I will say the way that I draft teams, I like I don't really have a reason to take Corley except for in best ball, <laughs> which, of course, I, where I take him every every time. I was gonna say that's not a problem for Denny. Um, you're looking for the running back Malachi Corley. Like who? Who's the running back Malachi Corley? But I mean, after I take Louis Reese Samet in the fourth round, <laughs> I just I wait for Corley. Um, well, I guess that's on to me for my final player, and this one almost feels like cheating too. It's I'm doing kind of obvious rookie running backs, but Ray Davis, who just seems like already locked in to number two duties for the Bills, is like the early down compliment to James Cook, pass catcher James Cook, uh, you know, passing situation back James. The Bills seem so committed to the two-man backfield. Like, they just cannot give up this idea of the two-man backfield. And Ray Davis, where he's like the power early down guy, James Cook, last year he, he was not good after contact. He, he's very, like, you know, he's like an explosive guy, but I guess he just goes down easily. He was only 30, 43rd in average yards after contact. He only forced the 18th most missed tackles. Uh, so kind of like basically playing in to the narrative that he's more of like a lightning back. He's more like ideally a change of pace, explosive back. He, he had only two touchdowns on the ground last year, James Cook. Sure. Part of that is because J- Josh – not part of it. A big part of that is because Josh Allen called right. his own number 15 times and scored 15 times in the red zone. But it just – there's not a whole lot of evidence that they want to like expand that part of James Cook's game. And we're, we're Ray Davis, he, he's literally 5'8", 211. Like, he's built, like, the ultimate, like, power, like, low to the ground back. He's known for, like, his, his patience, his vision. This seems like someone who's going to grind out some tough yards. And he, he's not a zero in the passing game, actually, either. Uh, very experienced, 840 uh, college touches. Wow, right? really? Which uh, might not even be a good that's not. That's not a little. No. <laughs> It just seems like uh, Kyle. Do you, do you agree that Ray Davis profiles as like an off the bat, uh, early down compliment to James Cook, or am I like severely like uh, just not taking into account how good James Cook is, and that maybe his role could indeed get bigger, and we shouldn't worry about like a day two or three rookie in Ray Davis. Yeah, I mean, I think it's probably more. I think the most likely outcome is that Josh Allen's the early down back. Like that's on the early downs we care about for the most part. Like or on the on the short yardage downs, not even early downs. I think that's the most likely outcome because sort of like we've talked about with uh, Jalen Hurts. Like, could they get rid of the tush push? Absolutely. Are they incentivized to do so? No. Like you've got the free touchdown play, and Josh Allen is not. Uh, he's not quite as automatic, but he is one of the league's best runners of the football. He scores touchdowns at a high clip. Like. I would think, keep riding that one. He scored a lot of touchdowns doing it. But if they wanted to go away from it, I actually do think Ray Davis would make a lot of sense as that guy. And as we saw, like I I do think they have some trepidation on playing James Cook. Do I think they should? I I think he's really good. He popped in a lot of the metrics last year. But I don't know that they feel as confident as I do. I I would actually kind of guess they don't feel as confident as I do. So I I think this is a good bet to make. And it's just, it's like, I I just, uh, this is another horse I beat to death, but once you get typecast as a guy who's better as a third down or change of pace guy, James Cook is used more than a third down or change of pace back, but coaching staffs love to typecast running backs. And yeah. they just seem to not think James Cook will ever be like a true three down bell cow type of guy. Yeah. I, right. I will say that in the, in the Ray Davis could be the early down, like hard yardage guy. He was, what'd you say? He's like five, five, eight or nine and He's two five, ten. Eight, five, eight, yeah. uh, those are, those are the Jalen Warren metrics who uh, is apparently a scat back. So we are, we will be bringing that one back up uh, sometime soon. Yeah, but I, I'm back in on Jalen. Warren. I was never out by the way. I don't know. The, the committee will decide if you're back in or not. You know, the, the cabal of James Warren drafter or Jalen Warren drafters will allow you back in or not. It's not your say anymore. I think I took him in the magazine mock draft. 
Oh, that's good. Okay, you we'll did. let you back in. Welcome yeah, back. Yeah, you did. It was actually like the most annoying pick I've ever When seen. I was actually on the clock, so yeah, yeah never mind. Yeah, <laughs> I, you, you ruined my entire draft. Thank you. Sorry about that. We're almost out. Kyle, you had did you have a bonus player that I was going to? Yeah, I threw in a bonus player. I wasn't sure if we were. I well, I I told you guys we're going to say CH was too ugly to do. So I was like, (laughs) we can do a fun one. We can do a fun one. This one I actually think is like a a good pick that shouldn't make you uh shouldn't make your tummy upset. It's it's it's, now we're uh, we're talking. It's like listen, I've been I'm down here in the south. I've been eating kind of poorly. Uh, No, you you should be eating good. Don't. No, I've been eating been eating really good. I was going to say, if you've been eating poorly, it's because you were stuck in a print shop just feverishly trying to put these magazines together. My Midwestern stomach can't handle it. <laughs> you saw, you saw like a green fruit. pepper and you're like, oh, no, no. <laughs> yeah, Denny, there are no salads to be had. There's no fruit? There's no salad? <laughs> no, I have, not even, not a bit. I have not had a single piece of salad or fruit since I arrived. Good God, Good. man. Uh, who's the bonus player, Kyle? Good luck. Bonus player, Luke Musgrave, was like a top 20 receiver in most of the efficiency metrics last – top 20 receiver, top 20 tight end in most of the receiving metrics last year, top 10 in ESPN's open score, was a rookie who immediately got playing time, and now he's on an offense that we are all losing our minds to draft players for, which kind of good. Jordan Love's really good at the end of the year, and you watch him, and you're like, that guy looks like he's going to be good for a long time when you watch him play. And the numbers were really strong over the second half of the year. Yet Luke Musgrave, because we're not entirely sure he's the starter, is getting almost no love in drafts. Tucker Tucker Craft isn't even practicing right now. At least he wasn't as of like a week ago. I think they said they expect him. They expect him back. We'll see for training camp. Like expect him back for training camp is is like get ready to miss most of the preseason. Like we hope you're hey, back. Guess who else is expected back for training camp? Kyron Williams. I look. I'm not trying to go to bat for Kyron. Uh, I that's don't put me in the camp. Don't put me in the the Kyron camp. Guess He's, who else is expected back for training camp? Uh, Anthony Richardson. Uh, wait, he nah, is, he's at least on the field or something, isn't he? Yeah, he actually is. Yeah, that's right. I was gonna say hey, Joe, he, Joe Burrow said he might play this season. <laughs> yeah, <that's good. laughs> you got that going for us. Stop. All right. Yeah, Sorry. I mean to be to be fair, he he said he should be ready to go to start the season. Joe Burrow. Besides saying he's going to have to throw differently for the rest of his career, I really loved everything he said. Yeah, I, wait, I is that true? Yeah, yeah, I think it's great that um, all the news coming out of Cincinnati says that Joe Burrow definitely will play eight, 17 games this year. The, uh, the hand reattachment went well. Yeah, right. Too soon. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, you like Luke Musgrave, Kyle. He's he's. Uh, one of the better i think he's not going quite as late as Noah Fant. so if you kind of block off the really late guys i think he's one of the better yeah true breakout like Noah Fant, i think you're hoping for six or seven hundred yards like on a true high-end outcome luke musgrave could be like a true tight end one for fantasy purposes because he flashed a lot as a rookie was a super athletic prospect and he plays on an offense we want to draft guys from when you were talking about the packers kyle i had an intrusive thought where like i loved watching jordan love play like I felt like totally wrong on Jordan Love, mm-hmm. and just he was like a joy to watch play. But man, uh, I sort of wonder if the Packers are going to be one of this year's like biggest money losing offenses out there in fantasy. And like we just overestimate how truly arrived Jordan Love and this offense are, and if he's going to be ready for the adjustments they're going to be thrown at him this year. Right. And, yeah. There, yeah. There, are, there are there are some numbers to, to suggest that Jordan Love is going to be kind of boom busty. Um, you know, it, it kind of inconsistent. So it is, it is true that um, he didn't do well in like the more stable passing metrics. And that, no. that makes me think that you might be onto something, especially the first half of the year. And like, I think we should wait the more recent stuff higher than we should wait, but like, it's not that different. They both happened in the same calendar year. It's not like we're saying, ah, oh, well he was, he was bad in 2021. No, like he, he was really struggling in some of the advanced metrics over the first half of the year. He had a few hot touchdown games, but they're like big yak games. And then he meaningfully looked better in the second half. We should wait the second half more, but do we want to ignore the first half of the season? We're like, I just don't know if this guy has it anymore or ever had it really. Cause we hadn't seen him. And then he did have it over the second half, but like we're dealing with small samples here. Crazy things happen in small samples all the time. Mm-hmm. And it's not like mm-hmm. last year. I'm saying it was 16 good games, I'm saying eight, eight really, really good games. But Pat, I think you're totally right to be like, there is there is room for error here. We are not, we haven't arrived. We are on, the plane is on the runway to leave, I think. Probably. Yeah, I just don't know if your 10 best plays of the season should all be off your back foot throws. <laughs> if, if that is really the most uh, repeatable recipe. For it, but he, it, worked for, it worked for Aaron Rodgers. And, uh, he, Jordan Love just seems like a baller. So, but 
there there's probably more volatility there yeah. than we would like to acknowledge. And but man, by the way, the Dallas Cowboys or the Dallas Cowboys, I just would have considered not getting blown out of my own building by the Green Bay Packers. Oh, man. You know, I, I remember I, I didn't have a strong feel on that game until mm-hmm. they showed the Packers sidelines before the game, and I was like, mm, this is over. This game's <laughs> over. These guys these, these guys are playing with house money. It doesn't – like, they're they're cool, calm, collected. You look over at the, the Dallas sideline, and they were basically just all having internal panic attacks. McCarthy is sweating bullets. He's yeah. like, all right, just got to I mean, win against the lower thing. seed this time. Right. They had everything to lose. It was, it was, I just knew at that moment, I was like, oh, the Packers will win easily. Yeah. They will win easily. Um, later this week, we have another show Thursday. It's, it's hard for me. It's hard for me to give it up, but I'm, I'm taking off Thursday to help get this magazine into production. Denny Carter is going to be hosting with Mr. Kyle Dvorak. Uh, Denny, uh, you have an article. That you're gonna yeah. to want to talk about on Thursday. What's it about? Tell the people about it. Yeah, check it it's out, good. and then you're gonna break it down on Thursday. Yeah, right. Uh, it's on the site now. It's, it's just about uh, players who are gonna be in what I think are insanely positive offensive environments, who I think are being undervalued or underdrafted right now, and I, I think we have a good chance to continue in that direction, being undervalued uh, going into the summer. So listen to Denny. Listen to Kyle on Thursday. Listen to me having extreme FOMO. And like five yeah. minutes before the show, being maybe I should, maybe I should yeah. just come on. And do it. You're, you're just gonna barge in in the middle. Yeah. Of it. Hey, <laughs> maybe I should just do it. And yeah, yeah, let's just be legends. Let's do it. And you guys are like, that's fine. You don't need to do it. Um, no, let's just do it. I just, just to be safe, let's do it. Uh, it's gonna be Denny and Kyle on Thursday. Check it out. Thanks for checking us out today. Check out Denny's article. Check out this draft guide once we get it on newsstands and online um, later this month in June. Uh, so for Denny, for Kyle, and Pat, thanks for listening. Show will be back later this week.